How are you doing tonight, Tara? Doing all right. How are you? I mean, you you have. I your... sprained my toe, and I don't know how. All I did was stand up, and my toe just noped out. Did you have like the one toe ring on it, and Gollum maybe bit it, but you couldn't see him? That's backwards, but whatever. <laughs> what? That makes sense. That's a thing that could happen. You seen that like GIF, the animated GIF with all the numbers floating in front? Of the That's me right yeah. now. I'm like. I'm trying to parse that, and it's it's just it's. <laughs> well, because Frodo had to put the one ring on, and he got his finger bitten off. No, my toe is uh, still there. I I don't toe ring. Is it? No, I just all I did was I stood up, and my and my toe just went. Okay, we're done. I'm like, no. Yes. No. Yeah. I'm out of warranty is the problem. I'm, I've been telling people all night, I'm out of warranty. Y'all need to go get a new one because the spare parts for a used one is just, it's, it's too expensive. I mean, it's ridiculous. You go on eBay, you look, you a new toe. I mean, come on, come on, get a new, just get a fucking new one. I mean, do they even make your model anymore? Though? I don't know. Maybe they've got a better one, but the better one won't have a headphone jack. I, is, I mean, so. you're older than the Apple too, man. I st I still have I you know I've got a headphone jack I'm not saying where but I do, um, so yeah. <sighs> Hope it wasn't in your toe. <laughs> so anyway, it is time for the nonsense. We've got some stuff tonight. I know I always yeah, I, heard, I heard tonight's gonna be weird. It always is, but yeah, and you, I heard you say that, and I was like. As opposed to all those weeks where it's a bunch of normal people doing normal things. I know. I think I think every week at some point I'm going to become desensitized to all this. And then every week there's always something that makes me go, what? <laughs> what? Oh, humanity. Uh, How you never fail to disappoint us. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? We're going to start off this week. Now, if you live in a major city, you have seen the jumping the turnstile on mass transit behavior. That's when you, yep. the motherfucker, they don't have their card, they don't have their pass thing, so they hop the turnstile and they run to the subway. And sadly, sometimes that actually works. They just A lot of the time it works. A lot of the time it works. But there's a place it doesn't work, and that place is the fucking airport. No. Attempted security breach, halt screening at Orlando International. Person is in custody. No, nope, shush, lady. At Orlando <laughs> International after trying to run past security. Saturday afternoon, a person later identified as Ryan Scott Mills attempted to run through the West Checkpoint, but was apprehended before doing so. Now, here's where it gets even fucking worse. Later, police said while they were trying to arrest Mills, he reached into his pocket and someone in the screening area yelled that Mills had a gun. No. Authorities say this caused a panic. Yeah. While, while some pastors ran past the checkpoints to get away. Authorities say there was no gun involved in the incident and no shots ever fired. But God knows what got through the checkpoints in the panic. So one of the TSA, someone in the screening area, likely possibly one of the TSA officials, screamed gun. And the whole thing just turned into a fucking. Now let's. Look, let... I know the kid does this at the end of Love Actually. He just runs through security. Two things about that. One, it's England. And security. I mean, I don't know about England, but Ireland's no, no. security's not as 
rigorous there. Like not, it's just not. I've gone through. I've gone through Heathrow. It's it's they're a little strict about that shit. Two, it's a movie. It's not. It's not real. And you are not an adorable ten-year-old Moppet. I take it. So. No, I just. Yeah, all right. First off, yeah. I mean, they don't put up those metal detectors and no. the screeners. And it's not for show. Mm -mm. We got evacuated at Orlando once, didn't we? St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay. I thought it was. Or I could have sworn it was Orlando. Okay. No, it's just it, the idea that you could just run through and they'll be like, "Oh, you." We'll get you next time. No, no, no. That is that is all hands on deck for alarm fucking fire. When we flew to California in December, we were in the TSA line and this girl, you know, the, the line snakes around. Yes. This girl who was like two snakes around leans over. And I, I swear to God, this is true. This chick goes, excuse me, excuse me, until the TSA person looks at her and she's like, my flight boards in like four minutes. Can I just come through? Without a word, they just looked at her and went. Like, That's what no. they, they tell you when to show up. Yeah. They tell you, you don't. Not, you're not fucking special, guy. Everybody's got to do it. You got to fucking. We are cattle. Yes. <laughs> we are cattle and the TSA herds us. But we have even more airport shenanigans. I don't even this this is gonna take some breakdown here, I gotta say. Um Firefire arrested three times in twenty-four hours at Cleveland Airport for disorderly conduct intoxication. When you remove him from the airport at some point. <laughs> Cleveland man and 30-year firefighting veteran pleaded no contest to misdemeanor charges Wednesday after he was arrested three times within 24 hours over incidents that took place at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. Chief Battalion William Graham, 55, was arrested, <laughs> was arrested Monday afternoon after he attempted to board a flight while under the influence of alcohol. According to court records, Graham was barred from boarding a flight to Boston due to severe intoxication, was confirmed by JetBlue. Footage recorded by a police officer's body cam during the first incident showed intoxicated Graham arguing with a JetBlue employee at the airline, airline gate. Quote, I'm a battalion chief in the city of Cleveland, said Graham to the airline worker, slurring his words and identifying himself as a seasoned firefighter. Good for you, sir. You're also drunk as fuck. <clears throat> When police attempted to remove him from the premises, he became combative and disruptive, swearing at officers. After moving outside, Graham fought verbally with law enforcement before he was arrested. And that should have been the end of it. Yes. But the incident would prove to be the first of three within a 24-hour cycle. Graham was again arrested after boarding his rebook flight the following morning. This time as the plane taxied away from the gate. Graham was reportedly hostile towards passengers and refused to follow safety instructions set by the airline. He also purportedly attacked airline employees in the hallway. So wait. After being arrested for being a jackass. And you, you got, they rebooked your flight. They're like, you can come back. And instead of being like, I'm going to sit in my seat, I'm going to get where I need to go, you double down. You double down on the jackass. He figured it's a whole new crew. They won't know about his previous jackassery, I guess, and he'll get a freebie. Here's the thing, though. Even if they don't know you, you don't get to fuck with them. And, and not only that, he waited till he actually got on the plane... And they were trying to, so what they had to do was, they had to turn the plane around, go and back. And delay everything. Everybody had to wait on it. And if you delay, if you delay a flight at an airport, that means another flight is delayed getting to the gate, which means it's delayed taking off, which ever, it's like a fucking domino you, yeah. effect. Yeah, you fucked up everything. And then, 
as if there needs to be an end then, Kramer's arrested a final time for disorderly conduct later again on Tuesday afternoon, only five hours after the second arrest. Third incident garnered Graham a charge for disorderly conduct, the most serious of the three charges. Since the first incident, Graham has been placed on restricted duty leave. Representatives from the Cleveland Division of Fire have not commented on the arrests. Yeah, you know, you're not really setting a good example there, Battalion Chief. That's... Like, where were you trying to go? Jail, apparently. You could have spent a lot less money to do that. <laughs> Airplanes in this day and age are like little kingdoms. They're little sovereign kingdoms, and the rulers of these kingdoms are the people in the uniforms. And they can fuck you up any reason they want. Yep, they can. They have absolute authority. If any reason, if you look at an airline attendant funny, you're off they the fucking kick plane. You the fuck off the plane. Yeah. Like, they have, and sometimes they fuck up. I mean, they beat the shit out of a guy for not voluntarily giving up his own seat. And they fu and that was kind of a tremendous fuck up, and the yes. airline catches all sorts of hell for it, but they're but they allowed to do that. Yeah. Don't fuck with them. Uh, this next story kind of makes me happy. Because I hate golf. I hate it. I absolutely hate golf. It is the worst sport. I just don't get golf. Like I don't I don't really get what's fun about it. Well, it's not just it's not just not about fun. It's not just about the fact that it's dog stupid. It's not just about the fact that you you will you would rather watch flies fuck than watch I mean, watch even the golf. clothes aren't fun anymore. They, at least everyone used to dress silly. Now they just wear boring polos. It's also the fact that golf courses take up so much real estate for no yeah. other purpose than their silly, stupid fucking game. In, could, in the town my dad is from in Ireland, it's now known for a very famous golf course, which wraps around the cemetery that my aunts and uncle are buried in and my father's parents. It's this little tiny cemetery that is a little donut hole wrapped in a golf course. And like my cousin said, when they were burying one of my aunts, every now and then in the middle of the graveside service, you'd hear four and a ball would whiz by. Like, it's there's such a, a tremendous waste of land, especially in an era where nobody can fucking rent a fucking apartment for under like a gajillion dollars. Well, I mean, on the other hand, it does preserve open space, which we have less and less of. Eh. Eh. But it's not like there's wildlife. And it's not like you're allowed to go there. Right. So, it's not like there's wildlife enjoying that open space. So, so. what made this, what about this story makes me particularly happy is um, now all the shit we have to deal with is spilling over to the golf course and you fucking choke on it. You fucking choke <laughs> on it. We already had a golf course pooper a few years ago. Drunken golfers whack fellow golfers with clubs at Portland course. Oh. Get jail time. Is golf the new bingo? <laughs> Two drunken men who attacked a pair of fellow golfers with their clubs at Northeast Portland Golf Course have now been uh, both sentenced to jail terms between 30 and 45 days. The victims of Matthew Leo and Jacob Ryan Self suffered welts and lacerations from the beatings, but also broken fingers from holding down their attackers until police could arrive. Salt took place on May 5th at the Rose City Golf Course. Leo and Self had been golfing in the wrong direction on the course, according to a probable cause affidavit. When they crossed paths with Henning, Henning and Roland Larson, who were playing in the proper direction, the Larson spoke to the wrong way golfers about their interference on the course. Spoke to, which means to, what the fuck are you doing? Um... A short while later, the groups crossed paths again. That's when Leo and Self suddenly whacked the Larsons with their clubs. Leo was the first to swing his club at the head of Roland Larson, prompting Larson to lift his forearms just in time to protect his head. The you can fucking kill somebody that yes! way. Yes! Golf clubs are not light. 
Cell followed by striking Henning Larson's back with his club. The force bent the club. Leo and Self, both 37, are friends. They were heavily intoxicated. So you go to golf. You get super fucking blitzed. And then you golf the wrong direction on the course. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with this, we're like wrong direction. It's a hole. You, but no, there's a cycle you go through through the holes, whether it's nine or eighteen, and you have to go through the course in the proper cycle. And if you go the other direction, you interfere with other golfers because you, you have to wait. People's lives, yeah. right? You have to wait for one set of golfers to play through. Then they get off that green. Then it's your turn. And if you go the wrong direction, and when somebody's like, "Hey, you're playing backwards." You decide to beat the shit out of them. You fucking go all barbarian horde with golf clubs. You could have killed them. Yes, because that's not a light little instrument. It's no. not like a putt-putt driver. It's this no. big hunk. You could kill somebody with a putt-putt driver. True, but the, a golf club, it's like the size yeah. of your fist. This big hunk of metal. Jesus fucking Christ. Weighted, big hunk of weighted metal. That's a deadly weapon. <laughs> So golfing is like driving. Well, no. Because... Like, I, I got a little weirded out watching my nephew play lacrosse because they're allowed to hit each other with the sticks, which I did not realize. Until I saw nine-year-olds beating the crap out of each other with lacrosse sticks. It's and, how, But they were petting. It, it's how they weed out the weak. Like, you don't wear fucking armor for golfing because it's not a full-contact sport. I just... Yeah, th th just the fucking. If Dan played, I don't think Dan would do well with golf. I think he would probably hit somebody. Just the, I I just, yeah. Just the entitled bullshit of this, because you're already paying God knows how much. Yeah. To be part of the golf club. And then on top of that, you're like, fuck it. I pay my dues. I don't get drunk. I play my way. I pay beer. You don't tell me what you have to do. And, like, how good are you playing when you're that fucked up? I hit a hole in four. Like, what's your, what's your fucking score like on the par three, Chuckles? I had this, 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 this many. I, I had this many, okay? We did used to live near a golf course. Our backyard used to border a golf course, but we didn't see any brawls, luckily. Mostly just deer. Yeah, and the occasional golf ball whizzing by your face. Yeah, occasionally while we were sitting out in the back, golf ball would fly by. All right, our next one is, you know, I know we're all a little sensitive these days about potential bomb. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite. Ah, it's funny. It's funny. Um, I, I, I know we're all a little sensitive about bomb threats and the potential, you know, all that shit these days. And it's understandable. It's a little understandable. However, context matters. And um, this seems like someone went a little uh, a little overboard. Home Depot bomb threat was actually customer warning he's about to poop. What? A Home Depot customer's polite warning that the end of days was imminent, announcing to others he was about to go poop in a washroom, was mistaken for a bomb threat in Wichita. Wichita Police Department, uh, Wichita Police Department police were called to a Home Depot on Monday afternoon for a reported bomb threat. Quote, we just had a customer in here make what may have been a bomb threat. He, uh said, somebody told me there's a bomb in here and you need to leave the building. He said it three times. Police responded to the home uh, renovation store and learned the threat came from someone standing in the store's restroom. Uh, what he actually said was, quote, you all need to get out of here because I'm fixing to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> And I love how the news story tries to translate here, understanding the man was, quote, in serious need to defecate, and he was attempting to provide a polite warning to the other patrons of the bathroom. The regular customer told police he gave the warning to the employee in the washroom, meaning it is a joke, 
but he didn't know the men's bathroom humor was taken so seriously. Like, I know sometimes you just gotta go. (laughs) But maybe... If you can, like, in a situation like this, I feel like if you can get home, <laughs> go home. Well, am I am I wrong that this is just, this is strictly a dude thing? I don't believe I've ever called my bodily functions any level of terroristic action, no. I, I've, I've never heard a woman, and this just might be my limited experience, but I have never heard a woman go, Oh, don't nobody go in there! Oh god, it's 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 a it's definitely a guy thing to have this bizarre fascination. Well, yes, because you see, when you're a woman, mm-hmm. it is not socially acceptable for people to know that your body does things. I would argue it's not socially. So you have to go out of your way to hide the fact that you use a bathroom for anything other than touching up your lipstick. I yeah, but your relatives will inform me that their husbands. Those are, are my in-laws. <laughs> Those aren't even, those are my sisters in that. <laughs> that doesn't count. Blood. He's a really good pooper. <laughs> now I'm just two steps removed and not blood. You say it's not so, I would argue it's not socially acceptable for guys to do it anyway, but we're just such fucking knuckle draggers. We just sort of brute force our way through anyway. I mean, yeah. Because women if- are expected to carry special spray in our purses. To keep there from being any smell when we use the bathroom. Because like, I'm a guy, and in my stupid ass youth, I've done shit like this. But I would argue you should. Nobody should have let me. I would. I'm like, dude. I don't need to hear about your poop. No, it's not fun. It's not. It's the only the only time women do it, and it's weird, is when they have children. Because a woman with a baby is dying to tell you everything about that baby's digestive system. (laughs) Dying. What color the poop is, its consistency, how many times it happened today. They are dying to tell you everything that comes out of their child's ass. I don't know why. Well, grown men are dying to tell you everything that comes out of their ass. And I I don't... I don't... I don't... don't, Okay, I will give a little slack to, like, someone who hasn't have control of their bowels yet yet at one point doesn't count but when you're a grown-ass man you should at least appreciate hey we don't like you your poop we're not a friend of your poop we don't need an update we're not opposed to it like you should poop yes because not doing so is very bad for you so you should by all means poop and you should feel free to keep it to yourself. But you don't need to make the kind of announcement. I mean, yeah, because I mean, if I'm like, I'm like, um, you, you might want to. It, it's not going to be pleasant in there. I'm terribly sorry. I had problems with it. Just, I'm ter. You shouldn't be all like, "Woo, I'm gonna blow it up. My butt's gonna do things." Woo. You shouldn't be like proud of that shit. Yeah. Or if if you if you do describe it in those terms, it should be with utter horror and dismay. It should be like. My butt did terrible things. You shouldn't be, like, trying to high-five the kids at the Home Depot. No. You just like, want to pee on their probably way too short break. No, it should be It should be with solemn regret. It should be like, I don't that's know thing, what like, happened. Chances are that's the only opportunity those people have to pee all day. They don't have a choice no. to be there. No. And whatever you do in there, someone making 10 bucks an hour has to clean it up. And if you're... And having cleaned the Starbucks bathroom every night for a few months... Just, no. Go home. Uh, I don't care if you have to put a fucking plug up your ass until you get there. Go home. Now, this next one was def- This next story took um, <clears throat> some twist I was not expecting. I, th- this is, this is pretty, m- this is some, this is some M. Night Shyamalan kind of twist. Oh. Um, because... I, I, th- this is one of those moments you're like, is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Woman breaks into Houston home to smoke pot and is greeted by Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> a tiger alarmed a woman who was sneaking into a seemingly abandoned Houston home 
to smoke marijuana on Monday. Now it has found a new home of its own. Oh, good. Because that was my, I was like, this isn't funny. Where did the, what, is the tiger okay? <laughs> the tiger's okay. Cleveland. Ar- it's me, like Carl Lagerfeld died today. And the first thought in my mind was, is Choupette okay? Choupette's worth $5 million. That's his cat. She has her own penthouse and two mates. I'm sure. The but that was my worry. The Cleveland Armory Black Beauty Ranch, a sanctuary located 200 miles north of Houston, announced it was oh, welcoming yeah. the tiger. Um, if you're still caught up on the would-be smokers stumbling across an actual tiger part, let's back up. That's from the actual story from NPR. Yeah, that's a lot of hyphens in a word. The woman, who is remaining anonymous, told police she had gone into the home in a residential part of East Houston when she came across the unexpected inhabitant. Fortunately for the woman, the tiger was locked inside a four feet by eight foot cage within the garage. She called three one one, the city's non emergency line. You know what? You did the right thing. That's you that, did. Wow! Someone actually called the right number. Good job. And animal enforcement officers showed up alongside Houston police who obtained a warrant enabling them to reach the tiger. Despite the tight quarters, the tiger had apparently healthy and seemed to have been fed, fed regularly. Officials don't just don't know by hu- whom. Like- what happened here? So first of all, let, let's start with, why are you breaking into a house to smoke weed? Just smoke weed. Well, maybe she rents and she's not allowed to there. Okay, we'll find some place that is not breaking and entering. Yes. To smoke that would weed. Be better. It's just not, not it, because that's like, you know, that's, that's compounding. That said, had she not done that... This poor baby would still be sitting in a cage that's too small in an abandoned house. Okay, because you walk in to smoke the weed and you're about to light up and all of a sudden you hear, and you're like, well, shit, I haven't even started yet. What the fuck? This is some good shit. See, and my problem would be I would want, I would, I would want to pet it. <laughs> I'd be trying to befriend the tiger. Dan knows this to be true. I'd be over there trying to befriend the tiger. Like, are you yeah. okay, baby? Can I get you a steak? And I'd lose a limb. And, and that's it. why Aunt Tara only has three fingers. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh. I got I got a foul mouth, but there's part of me that's big Disney princess. That's like, oh, baby. That that's that's one Let's sing a song. That's one moment in your life you're just not expecting. You're like, I'm gonna get high. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hang out. Oh shit, there's a tiger. Yeah, and that's like a glitch in the matrix shit right there. It's like, yeah, we missed a few steps. Yeah, and suddenly tiger. Where did the tiger come from? How did the tiger get there? These are questions that I want answered. They don't know because it's not like you can just acquire a tiger without anybody knowing. You know, like they're not native to Texas. No, it's, so it's not like yeah. you can just go pick. It's not like a fucking possum. <laughs> That you can just pull in from your yard and nobody will know. Like, somebody knows where this tiger came from. What the fuck? Are, why? And, and I love they abandon the house, but kind of hide the tiger in there. Like, nobody's going to But know. we're still feeding the tiger because the tiger's feed- overweight. So you're in this abandoned house with a... You just keep, keep, you've got this house. None of this is a good plan. No. Also, it's very bad for the poor tiger. They need to run around and yeah. stuff. But I'm just, I'm just, I'm sitting there at that moment where you've got the joint in your hand and there's a tiger and you're like, I'm never smoking this shit again in my life. You're like, damn, this is strong. This, this, this is, I, I, I'm out. I'm done. Uh, just say no. Cause fuck tiger. That shouldn't happen. Ah, uh, and this last one this week is Okay. There are some things you you know are wrong when you do them. And you have every opportunity to say, no, I probably shouldn't do this. And yet, some brave souls try to push ahead anyway. A Tampa man reported an income of $18,497 the IRS sent him a refund check for 980000 
The IRS has seized a Lexus and $919,251 from a Tampa man who got $980,000 refund after filing a tax return that falsely showed $1 million in federal income tax withholding. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, so this wasn't like they put a decimal point in the wrong place. No. This is fraud. Oh. Yeah. As with most things involving the IRS, the story does not end happily. Uh, Ramon Christopher Blanchett, 29. Uh, but it does display a degree of ingenuity. Uh, in February 2017, Blanchett electronically submitted a self-prepared income tax return listing his for- his occupation as, quote, freelancer. He had W-2 forms from a Tampa nursing home and a Sizzler Platter restaurant in Murray, Utah. One W-2 showed $17,000 and 98 wages and $1 million in federal income tax withholding. In reality, the complaint says Blanchett actually paid $2,098 with no tax withheld. The other W-2, which was accurate, showed $1,399 in income with no withholding. How many deductions do you have to take? <laughs> like, how do you even fill out the form so that it says that? I know. So he get he's he he claimed this W two claimed a million in with tax withholding that he made eighteen thousand dollars and withheld a million in tax. So they sent him a check. <laughs> like really? Now the first mistake here is after they send you the check, you cash it, you disappear. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. you go you go to Cabo, yeah. You go to Panama, okay. You gotta get the fuck out. You go to a non extradition country, right? Go. <laughs> you you leave because that is your chance to do whatever the fuck you want. No, you don't hang back and you get buy a new a- name. <laughs> what? You get some new ID, and you get the fuck out. You don't buy your ass a Lexus and just sort of hang around. In your real name. (laughs) How did they cut him a check is what I want to, like, they just, they just believe whatever you write down. It's an IRS. Well, apparently, consider what the fuck happened this year. Yeah. The IRS was closed for a month. They have a backlog of returns. This is 2017. That was 2017. All right. Well, no. Now I know how billionaires pay no taxes. <laughs> they just write in, no, I don't owe you anything. And the IRS is like, okay. Yeah, you got a point there. You got you got me there. I would say if this if this was filed this year, that would make sense. But no, 2017. No, 2017. You got me there. They just fucking believed him. They're just like, okie dokie. So um, it doesn't really matter if we put a higher tax rate on billionaires, because they'll just be like, no, no, I, I, I don't owe you anything. And everyone will be like, all right. And it took them a while to realize they'd done goofed. Somebody's so fired. Oh, the God. Tree. They also, oh, I love, here's another part. He, he got uh, insurance on the car, so they had to cancel the fucking insurance policy and claw that money back, too. Yeah. Oh. I just. Wow. I love it. That's some fucking brass ones, man. Here's the best part. He hasn't been charged with a crime. They're just taking the money back. I mean. Technic- well, it's fraud. Yeah, he did yeah. lie on the form, but I'm like, they he wrote him the check. He hasn't been charged yet. Yeah, neither the IRS nor the financial institutions involved would comment. I can't imagine why. <laughs> um, just, why didn't you go? You could have just gone. No, you could be gone. And do you know how much, a million dollars in a place like, in, in like the Caribbean or just any place with non-extradition, you are living like a god. You're fine. You are set. But no. But you decided to stay there and buy a bunch of big ticket items. 
Like, what did he tell the... Because I have bought a new car in the past few years, and they kind of are interested in how you're going to pay for it. Like, if you're not taking out a loan, if you're not financing it with them, they ask. He got a cashier's check. Right, but before they'll even deal with you, yeah. like, they were yeah. like, okay, you work retail. How are you buying this car? And I had to tell them that I had inheritance money with which to buy the car. Like, they don't just, like, trust you that you're good for it. Well, apparently all he did was say, I'm good at, I will buy it straight up. Here's money. And they're like, okay, we like money. I mean, yeah, I guess if you show up with the cashier's check, they're not going to argue with you. Yeah, it's a cashier's check, which means yeah. the money is guaranteed. And if he's not supposed to have it, it's the bank's fault. So fuck it. Here's your car. I'm paid on commission, goddammit. Here's your fucking car. True. Uh, they just wrote him a fucking check. They just wrote him a check. And he didn't write, motherfucker, you disappear. Yeah. Do you not know how this works? Like, I, after I left my last job, a few months later, <clears throat> I got a deposit in my account from that company. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, and you know, paychecks were delayed. Mm. So it was conceivable. It could be my, but it was way too much. And I was panicking because I'm like, I do not want to ha have them come after me for this money. Like, and I immediately like texted like three of my old managers and was like, listen, I got this money. I don't know what happened. I will return it. Just tell me how. And they were like, oh no, you got a sales bonus. <laughs> that's, that's totally your money. But like, Extra money went into my account, and I freaked the fuck out. Yeah, I was like, "This is this is how my life gets ruined." Yeah, that's this is my first. If if I get like, oh. I don't return one penny of this money, and they burn me the fuck down. Exactly. <laughs> I just God. So the first thing we learned this week is if the IRS sends you a million dollars, run. Yeah. Just go. Don't look back. If you have people still here. Buy yourself some calling cards, because just go. Yeah. Learn to Skype. That's what you need to do. Just go you and... You can send them lovely postcards. You sure the fuck can. From, from your non-extradition country. Yes. Just go. Why did you stay? You idiot. <laughs> We've learned... I, like, the day a, that check comes in the mail, Dan's going to be like, pack your shit. Yeah. <laughs> Cats, we're going. Pack up the cats, we're out of here. Just, yeah, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. We're going to Ecuador. <laughs> we're, just leave it. I don't care what it is. I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about Ecuador. Just pack. <laughs> <laughs> We've learned sometimes in life, suddenly tiger. That's a thing that could happen at any given somebody, point. I, I didn't see who, but somebody said it was actually a very friendly tiger that was looking for affection, so. Aww. Yeah, but it's still a tiger, you know. Um, at some point in your life, you'll just be going through your life, doing what you do, and suddenly tiger. That's a thing that tiger. can happen. That's a thing that could happen. Just tiger. Yeah. And you may ask yourself, my God, what have <laughs> I done? <laughs> well done. Uh, Isn't there a setting in Grand Theft Auto where you can make whales fall out of the sky? There is. It's beautiful. kind of like that. It's kind of like that. Um, we've learned that maybe keep the details of your bowel movements to yourself. Yeah. Because sometimes they could be misinterpreted for a bomb threat. Also, it's just unnecessary. It really is. <laughs> I mean, the only thing people care less about is your thoughts on social media. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing people care, le care about less than your bowel movement. It's kind of on par with, like, why you love Bernie Sanders. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to hear it. I we, look forward to your YouTube comments. Oh, God. We've learned, uh, you, you, you do this shit on purpose, Tara. I do. She does. You just... Because I'm old and grumpy. Uh, we've, we've learned that, uh, not even golf is safe from drunken morons. <laughs> Um, speaking of drunken morons, after you've gotten arrested once at the airport, call it a day. Yeah. Just don't, take the L, man. Take don't triple down on that shit. Just take the L. Cause that's like 
That's like well, you're behind. Yes. That's like no, no. Let me roll them again. I got it this time. I can take them this time. The odds are with me. And finally, we've learned you can't go through security like jumping a turnstile because everyone freaks the fuck out. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Because seriously, the TSA, believe it or not, their job usually is very mundane. Nothing yeah. really happens. The minute something happens and they finally have something to do, oh boy, are they excited! <laughs> I don't know if excited is the right word. I guess once it's established that it's not a dangerous thing they're going to do, they're excited. Well, no, it's just... Because they're like, yay, something to do and I won't blow up. I'm just... They're all... They're tired of dealing with the smell of your shoes... They are tired of x-raying your fucking laptop. They are tired of seeing the outline of your dildos. At this point, someone runs to, through, through the fucking security. They're like, it's happening! You guys, it's happening! It's happening! <sighs> and then some dumbass yells, gun. You know, Larry, they said we'd come in, we'd protect our country, we'd, we'd save our, our people from terrorism. And all I do is handle dildos all day long. <laughs> all day long. 